Okay, uh, this is uh, screencast number two for uh, guide sheet number seven. We're looking at this time uh, velocity versus time graphs. Uh, the slope of a velocity time graph tells you uh, rise over run. That's velocity divided by time. That's the rate of change of velocity. So the slope tells you the acceleration. Now, if you calculate the area between the line and zero, you will also get the object's displacement. Now that's not the <coughs> position of it currently, it's the change of its position during that time period. Uh, the one thing a velocity time graph cannot tell you is where you are currently uh, located. It can just tell you how much you've changed your position. Now if the line is horizontal, like in A, it means you have constant, the same value, velocity because you're reading the velocity right from the graph. If the line is diagonal but straight, it means you have a constant value of acceleration. So you're speeding up or slowing down by a set amount. Uh, if the line is more gradually sloped, then that means you have a slower, uh, lower uh, acceleration value. Uh, it doesn't uh, you don't want to equate slower and acceleration. It just means a lower value, less change than you would have uh, with the steeply sloped line, which means you're going to have a higher value of acceleration, which means you're going to have a larger change of your velocity. Okay, so you get more rapidly changing how fast you're going. Okay, in this next one, the motion, we have a, a velocity time graph with several different motions. Uh, we want to look for which ones are at rest. Uh, it doesn't say at rest the whole time, it just says at rest. So let's go for any that are at rest at any time. Uh, the rest position is the zero velocity line. So anything that touches uh, the zero line is at rest at least for a short period. So B and C uh, meet those criteria. They do touch the rest line at some point. Uh, and therefore are at least momentarily at rest. Now the flat line doesn't mean you're at rest. It's not the same as the position time graph. Uh, to have acceleration, a non-zero acceleration, we should have some kind of slope uh, at any point in the graph that's not a flat line. So that means uh, B, uh, C, D, they all have sections where there is a slope, either positive or negative. So B, C, or D. Uh, now, which object or objects is not moving? Now, that indicates not moving at any point. That would mean it rests the whole time. Uh, in that case, we don't have any that are not moving the whole time. Uh, the flat line is not stationary. It's moving at a constant velocity. Uh, changes of direction can be found anytime when you go from below the graph, which would be negative territory, to above portion of the graph, which would be positive territory. So anything that goes through zero uh, is going to be a change of direction. Uh, the two that go through zero there are B and C. So as they go through zero, they're going from uh, one motion to another, uh, one direction of motion to another. Uh, which accelerating object has the smallest acceleration? You'd want to look for the flattest slope. Uh, it looks like uh, B uh, is relatively shallow. C is negative, but it's steeper than B. And this D is even steeper than C. So the one with the least amount of slope uh, is letter B. Uh, the greatest acceleration, at least for a period of time, appears to be the steepest section right here in letter D. So steepest slope greatest value of acceleration. Uh, same direction as E, so E is in the negative direction, so anything that always is below zero would move always in the same direction as E. So D is always moving in the um, same direction as E. It does have an acceleration and then what looks like a constant velocity section. So it speeds up for a while then reaches a constant velocity. Uh, during at least portions of the motion, both B and C are also moving in the same direction. 
uh, whenever they are in the area here below zero, uh, they would be in the same direction as the motion shown in letter E. Okay, so those are some of the different things you can get from the velocity time graph. Again, the slope is the acceleration, the area underneath is your displacement or change of position, uh, and the velocity you can read straight from the graph.